In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to play Bakugan, the card game where you roll marble-like figures that turn into monsters onto metal cards to do battle. Bakugan is a game that seems complex at first, but once you understand the rules, it really isn't all that bad. In this video, we will cover all of the basics like card types, Bakugan attributes, and chew power, then get into how to play the game and the different ways you can play. If you haven't seen my previous video on this yet, check out how to play the very original version of this game, HSP. I'll leave a link in the description as well as an icon here in the top right corner of your screen. It is a super detailed video that will help you understand how to play this version of the game. Also, if you enjoy this video, consider subscribing. I post Bakugan content pretty consistently, so if you want more Bakugan content, hit that subscribe button and stay up to date on everything Bakugan related. Now, with that out of the way, let's learn the basics. In order to play Bakugan, you need a few things. Firstly, you need three Bakugan. These can be any color of your choosing, you just need three. Secondly, you need three gate cards. These are the heavy metal cards that Bakugan can pop open on. If you look closely, you'll find that these gate cards have different colors on the back of them. They can be gold, silver, and copper. You will need one of each. And finally, you need three ability cards. These are more traditional cards with a paper texture to them. These come in the colors red, blue, and green, so pick one of each. Let's take a closer look at what each of these cards do. Starting with the gate cards, the gold gate card provides additional bonuses based on the type of Bakugan. Silver gate cards are a basic gate card that provide an attribute bonus to a Bakugan. More on what an attribute bonus is later. Copper gate cards, which can also be referred to as bronze, are cards that have unusual abilities, which can be read on the card. Players must follow these rules when battling. Red ability cards are what we call situational cards, often allowing you to be able to do something with your Bakugan before, during, or after you roll. Blue ability cards typically give the Bakugan a G-Power boost if the Bakugan meets a specific requirement. Green ability cards are described sort of as wild cards, and often have the most powerful attacks in-game. They often require you to meet certain game conditions to be able to be played, oftentimes requiring a losing streak, allowing you to catch up to other players, or altering the outcome or way your opponent has to play the game. Now that we have a little bit of an understanding of what each of the cards do, how does their relationship with Bakugan work? Bakugan come in one of six colors. Pyrus, Ventus, Subterra, Darkus, Aquas, or Chaos. You can find out which attribute your Bakugan is by matching the symbol on it with the color seen on this wheel. So for instance, this Bakugan here is green with this symbol, making it a Ventus Bakugan. If you open your Bakugan and look closely, you will see a number on them ending with the letter G. This is a Bakugan's G power, or their strength. Each Bakugan has a unique strength, so check the numbers. When two Bakugans stand on a gate card, the card is flipped over and the gate card provides an attribute bonus based on the attribute of your Bakugan. So for example, let's say this Ventus Skyrus and this Pyrus Dragonoid land on this silver gate card. Based on the attribute bonus, Drago would get 90 extra Gs and Skyrus would get 50 extra Gs added to their total G power leading to a total of 570 Gs for Drago and 370 Gs for Skyrus. Because Drago had the higher G power, he would be the winner. However, if this was a copper card, for instance this card duck and win, Skyrus would have won the battle as both Bakugan gained 110 Gs from the attribute bonus, but the card ruling states that Bakugan with the lowest total G power wins this battle so make sure to always read and obey the rules the gate cards give. When studying the cards, this is going to give you a good idea of how to build your deck, so plan your deck and your ability cards strategically for the game. It's before, during, or after a battle that ability cards may be played, so during a battle, always check your ability cards to see if you can find some way to win the battle. Remember that cards always take precedence over the game rules, so obey the ability card and gate card rules first. When planning your deck, it's important to read the ability card and gate card rules so that you can have the most powerful deck and always prepare for your opponent. You may also notice that some gate cards have a highlighted ring around the attribute bonus. 
This is in place for specific ability cards or Bakugan with specific treatments like Pearl Bakugan. Make sure to read the rulings on your specific ability cards for more information. Now that the basics are out of the way, let's finally play the game. Bakugan is normally a 2 player or 4 player game, but can be played with 3 as well. When playing, find a flat surface such as a table, mat, the floor, or a Bakugan arena to play on. Make sure each of the players have 3 Bakugan, 3 ability cards, and 3 gate cards. The goal of the game is to win 3 gate cards. Winning 3 gate cards finishes the game. To win a gate card, you must defeat an opponent on that card. From there, it can stay in your 1 pile. Players begin by forming the field, placing gate cards face down on the arena that look like this, with your gate card closest to your opponent. So in a 2 player brawl, your card would be here. In a 4 person brawl, the field looks like this, and your gate card will be placed here. While there is no official 3 person rules, I often have that player either place their card here, or here, whichever the other players find most suitable. The youngest player rolls first, and then players take turns rolling and battling. With 3 or 4 players, turns are taken counterclockwise after the youngest has rolled. Bakugan must be rolled from at least 2 cards lengths away in order to count. When it is your turn, you have the option of rolling a Bakugan onto the field, or placing another gate card on the field if you would like. The card must be placed first, and then you can roll that same turn. When placing a card, it must be placed down properly. Here are some examples of properly placed cards, and incorrectly placed cards. If you roll and stand, wait for a brawl, or engage in battle if that gate card is already occupied. If you roll and miss, that Bakugan is sent to your use pile where all used Bakugan and ability cards go. Bakugan must stay in the use pile until all three Bakugan are unavailable to roll. In the event you are out of Bakugan to roll, you may move them to your unused pile unless they are already on the field. Ability cards must stay in the use pile unless another card states to remove them. To help aid with this, I created this neat guide sheet for new players and experienced players alike. You can use this to keep track of your used and unused pile. There will be a link down below in the description and all you need to do is print it. Battle happens when two Bakugan land on the same gate card. The card is then flipped over, the gate card bonus is added to the Bakugan's G power, and then the card rules, if any, and the ability cards, if any, are played. The winner of the battle takes the gate card. Again, when a player has three gate cards, they win the game. In this version of the game, double stands do not count, meaning if you land two of your Bakugan on the same card, you must move the last one that landed to another gate card. If the gate card doesn't have an opponent's Bakugan, then it's the next player's turn. However, if it does, battle ensues. If there is not another gate card or enemy Bakugan in play, then you win that gate card uncontested and place both Bakugan in your use pile. Critical KOs do not count, meaning you cannot hit another opponent off a card to win. Similarly, if your Bakugan only partially opens or is stuck on the gate card, but not deployed, it counts as open. In the event of a tie during battle, each player rolls an unused Bakugan. The first player to stand on the gate card wins. And that is how you play Bakugan. I hope this video clearly explained the rules of the game so you can go and brawl with friends. Stay tuned as the next video I'm going to cover how to use Bakugan traps, battle gear, Baku Nano, mobile assaults, and Mechtogans in the game. Remember to leave the video a like, subscribe, and with that, thank you for watching. My name is Jesse, and I will see you in the next video. Peace out.